Welcome back to Jesse Lauscher's Physics. In my video on uncertainties, we had a student cycling to get his friend's lunch. Let's say he had a velocity of 5 meters per second. As well as needing a direction, since velocity is a vector, we sometimes also need to consider what a given velocity is relative to, and it's usually the ground. This notation is very important in physics. The first letter represents the object which is moving, and the second letter represents what it's moving relative to, which we can usually think of as stationary. I like to think of the stationary one as being where our camera would need to be placed in order to video what we're modeling in the problem. So in order to film the student riding past the houses at 5 meters per second east, the camera would just need to be attached to the ground. But the ground isn't actually stationary. It's part of the Earth, which is orbiting the Sun very fast, and that's orbiting the center of the galaxy. But this doesn't matter. If we call it our reference frame, then we can measure everything else relative to that, whether the reference frame is moving or not. And we choose our reference frame in order to make our modeling as simple as possible. Let's look at the classic train example. If a person walks along the floor of a train at 1 meter per second, while the train is moving at 100 meters per second relative to the ground, then the velocity of the person relative to the ground is obviously 101 meters per second. That's the speed that a person would appear to be moving from a security camera mounted on the tracks, since it's connected to the ground and thus part of the ground's reference frame. Now, in that case, the math was obvious, but the key idea here is that we can add relative velocities from different reference frames as vectors, and we'll do a harder two-dimensional example soon. But first, let's explore the reference frame in a bit more detail. Let's imagine that the cyclist attaches the camera, perhaps a GoPro or something, to his helmet. Here's what it would show as he rides at a velocity of 5 meters per second east relative to the ground. But what if we made the reference frame the person? In that reference frame, we would see what the camera recorded, because the camera is moving with the person in his reference frame. So we'd see the ground, and everything attached to it like the houses, moving backwards, thus at a speed of minus 5 meters per second east, or 5 meters per second west. Now that we've covered the key terms and ideas, let's apply them to a classic high school physics problem. Here we have a student swimming north at 2 meters per second across a river which is flowing east at 1 meter per second. Let's first look at the relative velocities in different reference frames. The velocity of the water relative to the bank is 1 meter per second. Please remember that the first letter represents what's moving, and the second letter is the reference frame it's moving relative to. The velocity of the person relative to the water would be simple if the water wasn't moving, but what if it is moving? Let's imagine that we dropped that GoPro into the river with a flotation device, which some swimmers actually use. It would now float along with the swimmer and record her swimming north at 2 meters per second. It wouldn't record her motion to the east because the camera is in the same reference frame as the water. The first question asks for the velocity of the person relative to the bank. So, let's place our imaginary camera on the river bank and think about what it would record. Most students quite easily add these two vectors to get the velocity of the person relative to the bank. If you're not sure how or why I'm adding these vectors like this, or why I'm using two arrows on the resultant, or what that means, I suggest watching my previous video on vectors. We can just use good old Pythagoras theorem to calculate the swimmer's speed relative to the bank. But since velocity is a vector, we also need to state its direction. Here's the opposite, adjacent, and hypotenuse, so we can just use tan theta and get 2.2 meters per second, 26 degrees east of north. As for how long the student takes to cross the river, we can just use the velocity of the person relative to the water. It wouldn't really matter whether the river was flying or not, but since it is, we could imagine using the video recorded by the camera as it floated down the river with the swimmer. The next question asks how far the student will be swept downstream while she swims across the river. Many students choose to use her velocity relative to the bank for this calculation, perhaps because we just calculated it, and perhaps because it kind of feels like the real velocity, as we're used to using the ground as our own kind of internal reference frame. So, whether they intended or not, most students effectively rotate their axes and then draw a vector diagram of the student's displacement relative to the bank. So, knowing that she swims for 25 seconds, they calculate that she'll swim a total distance of 55.9 meters, and then use trigonometry to calculate how far she'll be swept downstream during that time. This technique certainly works, but if we imagine that camera floating downstream with the student in the reference frame of the water, then it's easier just to measure this distance instead. So we can instead use the velocity of the water relative to the bank to get the same answer more easily. The next question is the first one which many students struggle with. Now the swimmer needs to swim directly across the river, perhaps to a boat she has there, or perhaps that's the only exit from the river. 
Many students naturally flip the triangle over and say that now the swimmer can swim in this direction while the water pulls her back so that she swims directly across the river. She's still swimming at 2 meters per second and the river is still flowing at 1 meter per second, so this would be her velocity relative to the bank, although the question doesn't require us to calculate it yet. But there's a problem here. These are not similar triangles. The adjacent on the right is the same length as the hypotenuse on the left, so the angles can't be the same. So this approach fails. We can see that the velocity of the person relative to the water on the left is too large. So we might want to just reduce this velocity to make it 2 meters per second, like it needs to be. And then because the river is still flowing at 1 meter per second, we need to connect up the vector diagram properly. But it still doesn't work because now she's no longer swimming towards her boat directly across the river. Here's an approach that does work. We know that she must swim at 2 meters per second and that the water is flowing at 1 meter per second. And the whole point of the problem is that she needs to swim directly across the river. So this must be our resultant. Clearly the angle needs to be greater than it was before, as well as in the other direction. Let's call this new angle alpha. Now we have a sine ratio instead of a tan ratio. If you're watching this, hopefully you know that sine of 30 degrees is a half. The last part of the question asks how long it will take her to swim directly across the river. So first we'll need to calculate how fast she swims across relative to the bank. Let's use Pythagoras again, and we get 1.73 meters per second. And because the river is 50 meters wide, we can just use velocity equals displacement over time to calculate that she'll take 28 seconds to cross the river. It's logical that she'll take longer than the first time because some of her velocity relative to the bank is now being canceled out by the flow of the water. This shows that if you're ever caught in a rapidly flowing river and trying to escape as quickly as possible, it's usually best to swim directly across the current, like in the first half of the problem, unless there are obstacles to avoid like rocks or waterfalls, or there are only certain points at which you can climb out of the river. This is because swimming against the stream, like in the second half of the problem, takes longer and also wastes energy fighting against the water current. In the next video we'll look at two harder vector problems. If you have any questions about this one, please ask in the comments. And if you'd like to see my future videos, please hit the subscribe button. Until then, as always, thanks for watching.